Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. We're revisit on the infected game mode. Talked about it a few times, and um, I did one other video on it. We got a non infected dude right there. Shoot him a few times, and he becomes infected. This was just, you know, proof of concept, just getting it to where you can see that um, the characters change over from the normal to the infected and back and forth. So, um, what I'm utilizing is Cindy Studios Polygon City Characters and City Zombies and the Town Pack. Um, between the three, you're going to have all the characters that you need. The Zombies Pack and especially whenever you go to the right folder. Uh, meshes folder, characters, as you can see you've got quite a few zombies. And you're gonna have like Bellboy, I haven't seen the Bellboy yet and anything else. Um, biker Zombie which is our guy here. Uh, biohazard Suit, uh, Bride Female, I don't even think I've looked at that one yet. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so, there's quite a few, if you think, minus the Skeletal Mesh, and is there physics in here? Yeah. So, you've got 50 different um, uh, zombies in this particular pack here. Um, and to coincide with where those are actually located, uh, you've got uh, the city characters, you've got like the fast food guy, tourist, um, the, the hot dog, and yes there's a zombie hot dog. Um, so you've got some of them in here. Uh, you've also got some in the, um, the town pack as well. So, pretty cool. I need to find uh, where some of the other ones might be, but not what we're going to cover on this. I'm going to talk about um, how we're going to get our character to go from this state to the other state and why we'd want it this way. Uh, what I was talking about before was in a... the usual zombie games, it's go out and massacre the, uh, the zombies and there's much rejoicing. Yep, even added a headshot thing. So, why be the same? Why do what everybody else does? Why just um, go out there and humans versus zombies and that kind of stuff? It's been done a thousand times. So why not, instead of just killing them, why not be that you are a human? Of course, everybody in here is going to be human. But these guys are infected. And you have a method of administering the cure to them. And whenever you cure them... In this case, it takes four doses or four gunshots. Um, would turn them from a zombie back to being cured. So it would be the cured versus the infected game mode. But just the same if the zombies or the infected attack one of the non-infected, they can convert them to become uh, infected as well. And the whole point of the game is like a battle royale type theme, but it's team versus team. The cured versus the infected, and say there's 10 versus 10, and what you're trying to do is if there are 10 infected and 10 cured, and one of the infected converts or infects one of the cured, then there is 9 cured and 11 infected. The person who gets infected, or the player or whoever, then becomes infected and the game will keep going until there's no cured left or no infected left. And at that point, the infected wins or the cured wins. So it's a seesaw battle back and forth of trying to capture back and forth. So that's the whole basic theory behind the, the game mode, is to be team versus team where you're actually converting the enemy over to your side. So hopefully that makes sense. Alright, so the, the next stage of it is, right now, again, as you can see, when we actually hit our guy, 
we've just converted them over. If we were infected, we'd be converting them over to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, new blueprint character, and that was my test bot. But what I'm going to do is take my player character, I'm going to right click and duplicate, and we're going to call him infected base, whatever. So inside this, go into our new one, and we don't need anything from here whatsoever. We're not going to include the shooting or anything else right now. We're just going to delete everything from here. Then we're going to get rid of the follow camera and the camera boom and the FPS camera and compost and save. We just want a base character. Now we need to figure out what we want our, our new one to look like. So I'm going to look into the city characters and let's pick a character out. Paramedic, Gamer Girl, Gangsta. I kind of want to use the Gangster. So we have a non-infected version of the Gangster here. And let's look in the City Zombies. Or I'm sorry, yeah, the City Zombies. And let's look for Gangster. Yeah, right there. So. I'm just going to go ahead and change my character over. Now, if you're wanting to convert your character to use these characters in here, I've shown multiple different times on multiple different videos how to convert to use these guys. So I'm going to go to Mesh and just click that. So there we go. And yes, his pants are around his ankles. So now do that and I'm going to go into here. I'm going to get rid of this guy. He's got all kind of cool pawn sensing and stuff like that. And, well, let's get rid of the trampoline. We don't need it in here. That was just goofing around. Do a quick save. Now, we can take our infected base, and I'm just going to throw him into the map. He's not going to do anything just yet. He's just going to be standing there. So, there he is. So I'm going to let him stay um, stationary. I'm not going to have him walking around. Uh, that's easy to do. Uh, I've shown how to do that multiple times, just to get him to randomly roam around. Uh, but right now, we just want to go over the conversion process. We're going to need some animations. And we've got the normal unarmed animations, which is the third-person animation blueprint. Um, that's fine. But we need another set of animations so we can have death. So we want to shoot him, he goes from the infected mode, he does a death animation, and then when he gets back up, or whatever, I don't have a get back up animation, I don't think. Well, first off, let's go ahead and I'm going to go to, hello, hello, thank you, yes, way too many projects. Um, we have, oh my god, so many animation starter pack and I'm going to add to project and somewhere amongst all these infected add to project and that's going to do its thing hello move thank you with the animation pack uh, starter pack it's using the standard UE4 mannequin but it includes its own version of it so the same process that we did to convert all the other ones over are going to have to be done again um, Retargeting manager, make sure it's set to humanoid rig. Grab the upper arms, go up by 50. Lower arms, back by 30. Down 10, hand, up 10. This is the same thing we do on every time when converting. Down 10, back 30. Hand up 10, modify pose, use current pose, save, and crows. We're done. And we'll come back to our infected base guy in just a minute. Alright, so we've converted that over, and for now I'm going to keep this simple. I'm not going to worry about um, all the blend spaces and everything else. I'm just going to go ahead and
let's see here. We got a bunch of different death animations. Um, but to kind of make things a little bit nicer, we could use like stand to prone or prone to stand as a method for getting back up again. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my animation folder for my new characters and create a new folder called misc for a miscellaneous. Going to go to this again and we're going to do prone to stand. Let's take, take a look at it. He actually just stands back up. Fortunately, he's going to go back to an armed status. Not much you can do there. But I'm going to do prone to stand. Now, you could also go on to Mixamo and grab some animations. Did another video on doing that. Uh, let's see here. Actually, I'm just going to do the death animation and then he'll just pop back up. Since I don't have an, a good animation for getting back up, I mean, I can still do both of them and I'll decide later. So, control left click on the ones that I want. You know, I'm going to go ahead and grab stand to prone as well, just in case we want to do that. No, nope, I'm not going to complicate things. Right click, retarget animations, duplicate animations and retarget, and we want our SK polygon, and we want to change our file folder location, character animations, miscellaneous, okay, and retarget. So now if we go in here, we should have there we go. Death one. And fine, save. And prone to stand so he gets back up. At least he, we have something for him to get back up with. Now, we can do this a couple different ways. If we're doing multiplayer, then you definitely want to use a montage. Um, you could also set it up to work with um, the animation blueprint, is another way you can do it. Uh, couple different ways we can accomplish this but what we want to do now is go back into our blueprints for our infected base and we need him to take damage with our player you can see here this looks a little complicated but we're using a line trace by by channel and playing the sound file and everything else and we're getting the hit results and you can do a nut shot or a head shot um, we're going to apply damage and this is key right here is we're applying damage this way with a base damage of 25 and place on a location like right, we're not worried about that this is the one that we needed to, to to see that we're using now we've already got a bunch of this stuff right here we don't need the crosshair. I don't know what I was using that one for, but we do need the health. His health is 100. So what we can do here is event any damage. So instead of like an event tick or something like that, this is going to sense that it just took damage. So event any damage and we're going to adjust the health. So we're going to need a get health and we're going to need to set health and we're going to do a, a check system here so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the damage from our health so we can do this be float no float minus float so we can take the damage now and put it right here. So we're subtracting our damage from our health and then we're going to set our health to the new value. So that's going to give us our current health value for where we are. But now we need to decide, cool, um, are we dead yet? Or is our, our infected 
um, crackhead, is he actually going to be still alive after he received that damage? So we can take this new value here. This is the current health value. So what we're going to have to do is take that and say, is it equal to or less than? So we can type in float. We want to know, is it less than or equal to zero? And of course, we're going to need a branch node. And here we could set it up to where if no, you know, if if it is not, we can just do a sound file like, ugh, I got hit, or, or whatever. You could do a, you know, a sound cue with random things in it to, to simulate that it, you know, the sound of him, oh my god, I just got hit, that kind of crap. Um, however, we're not worried about that right now. What we want to do is create a variable, and I'm going to do this, is dead question mark. Even though we're not killing things, it's just a simple way to, to do this. If it is equal to or less than zero, then what we need to do then is set is dead to true. So at this point, we can set it up to where in the animation blueprint it's going to detect that you are dead and at that point it's going to run a series of events that way we can handle it in here or we can handle it externally let's try to handle it in in the blueprint and see if we can do it that way and then may come back and revisit it later of doing it in the animation blueprint so instead of just using the is dead what we want to do is run a series of events and I'm going to create a custom event called death. And at this point, we are then going to true death. It's going to run that custom event, which is what we're going to build here. So if we are at zero, then what we're going to do is this. We want to get our character movement because we need to stop our, our, our zombie or infected from moving um, let's try to deactivate first then I'll come back and try doing stop all and that kind of stuff actually no I'm going to do it a different way set movement mode to none so it has no movement whatsoever okay so there we've stopped our movement even though technically he's not moving at all anyway but if it was we would just then be stopping it from moving and then the next thing we want to do is let's try to get our mesh and try to play an animation animation that we want to play is good god we got a lot um, let's go over here and since we've got so many different animations going on I'm going to select this one go back in here and I'm just gonna hit this little arrow and it's gonna select the correct one for me so let's test that theory out Alright, so did not work. It's checking our health. It's checking to see if it's zero. Less than or equal to zero. And it's running that event. So <sighs> Yes, I don't like trying to do it this way. Let's actually um go in here and right click and create animation montage and let's keep it selected 
play montage. All right, so hopefully we can do it now. If it's not, then I'll retrace where it might be going wrong here. All right, so why are you not cooperating? This is probably going to be one of those days where I'm forgetting something really, really minor, and it's going to make everything not work. It's applying damage. It's not setting it to do anything to any particular class or anything else, so that's fine. Um, death. Event any damage. Let's actually... This is where, when you have an issue, it's always best to do this first. Print text. Just throw that in there, and we're going to see that whether or not it's receiving damage or not. It is not receiving damage. So that's what the problem is. Right now, event any damage is not detecting the damage. Why would that be? Apply damage is working. And it worked on our other character. Oh, uh, let's see here. Event any damage, damage received, okay, okay, this looks a little bit more complicated, but what I've done here in the other one was on the event any damage, it's setting the damage received, it's checking to see whether it's infected or not, and if it is infected, it's going to get cured. On the get infected version, it's going to go in here and ask again, is infected? If the answer is false, then we're going to set our health to our health minus the damage received. And then it's going to ask, is it greater than zero? If it is, then set our health to zero um, and change your skeletal mesh and set its mode, is infected or not. Um, very simple. Why is that one working and not the other one? Oh. Um. <sighs> yeah. Momentary lapse of reason. Whenever you're actually doing this, I'm going to go in here and show you what I just remembered. I'm going to shoot him look red all the way through with this line trace by channel whenever it hits an object there's no collision to it so it's just passing right through so what you've got to rem remember to do that I did not do is on your skeletal mesh scroll down and collision presets instead of character mesh block all dynamic come post and save now, if we come in here and shoot our bad guy, see it turns green. It means that it's already passed through. So every time we hit him, it's saying hello now. We can see that we're, we're actually making contact. So, we're good. We'll leave that in here for now. Um, it's not playing the montage. So, what we can do is actually take this back out. We know that we're hitting. And we can also throw in here... I'm going to put it in after. This is the fun of troubleshooting. We can take our value here, and we're going to connect that to here. 
and we're going to see that whether or not it's passed all the way through to here. All it's going to do is print out the uh, current health. So we come in here and we shoot them. So our health is zero. You see it's steady going down. So it's actually registering the health values. Um, so let's go back in here and next thing we want to do is just going to go back in here and do a set health and set health to zero. So if this condition is true that we are at zero then we're going to set our health to zero. And then at that point we want to be able to run through our death event. So this is where we need to start troubleshooting. I'm going to go ahead and put in here death so it's going to run that custom event. So now every time we shoot them um, it's going to decrease the health to a certain point. Um, it's not going to go below zero because we keep clamping that value back down at zero. So you can see we've had it more than enough to to apply the kill. So something in our death is not working. So let's actually go in here and find out where it broke. So once his health gets to zero, we should see hello come up. See? Hello. So it's stopping movement and as I imagined it's not getting to this point. So I'm going to delete that and we're going to set is dead to true. Now, I'm going to go to the animation blueprint, which is all going to be this. Let's make sure that, um, okay, we are using the unarmed animation blueprint. So we go into unarmed animation blueprint, and this is unchanged. So I'm going to just take a minute to clean this up. It's an OCD thing. You guys know that I got a lot of OCDs. I just, I like things a certain way. And this animation blueprint's messy. And I can't deal with it. All right. So this is all lovely. We're stacked in. So what we're going to need to do here is we are going to need to get our infected base. So we're going to cast to infected base and we can get our try get pawn owner and drag that all the way over to here so we should be good on this now as an infected base we want to get is dead and what we're going to do is another variable here died And we will then run a branch node through here. Reason why is because we're going to create a not dead. And we can do that with Control C, Control V, put a check mark there. And there we go. Next, we want to go to our anim graph. 
got our default state machine, and our guy is not going to be jumping, but we're not going to interfere with this because this is the same unarmed animation blueprint that our character is using. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drag off from the idle run, and we're going to add a state. Death. To get to this condition, we need to if died is true, we can enter this transition. This transition, we need an animation, which is death one. Just link that in there, and it will do that. Come on, save, go back over here, and at some point, we're going to want to come back out of that. And we're going to add a state in. Revive. To get to this point, we want to, come on, cooperate, damn it. get this same value here of died and we're going to type in not be which will give us our not boolean and connect that in here so if we're not died if we, we if we're not died we are going to come back to that and then we're going to connect back to here and we're going to Uh, let's see if I can remember the time remaining. Get rel no. God, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, the ratio. It's the the ratio of time remaining. It's a percentage of of the basically we want to tell it to once the animation is completed. Okay, well, we don't have this in here. So let's do prone to stand. And go back to here. So that's going to complete that. Now we can come in here and should time remaining ratio prone to stand. So it's going to then we want to do is less than 0.1 remaining then we can go back into that so in essence when we're not dead it should then come back up there we go we are dead all right, so now it should not loop that animation. Let's look at the, yeah, see, for some reason it's looping. That's good to go. Set is dead to true. Um, go back to our event graph and that's fine but it, it's constantly setting that state here uh, let's actually put that beforehand see if that matters
sometimes you have to put a delay in because it will just not want to work. Why is it still doing the frickin' animation? Why must you taunt me? do once. Why are you doing that? Okay. Um, it's because the... this. It's setting that state. Um... And while it's in that state, it's running that animation. And we want to just do the animation once. Let's look at... Um, no, I don't want to open the thing all the way. There was a setting in here to where... Uh, Now, where you could tell it to only run the one time, but it should only be doing it one time anyway. All right, so what we're going to do to fix that issue is we have in here, in here, thank you. We have our death one animation. So let's go back to our, our animation here. And I am going to pause this. I'm going to fast forward it all the way to the end. And we're going to create an asset. Um, we're going to create an animation from current pose. And we're going to put that in our animation folder, miscellaneous, dead. All right, so now we have a dead animation state. So let's actually go back in here. So we're going to run this transition. We're going to delete this for now. We're going to go, we have entered this transition, we're going to perform this animation, and we're going to go to a new state. Uh, dead. So with this state now, we're going to grab our dead animation and just plug it right in. Why did you put it all the way over there, you dumbass? Um, so now it's just going to play that animation. So to get that animation to there, we do the same thing we did here. We died. Now we're in that death state. Now to get from here to the revive, we need to connect from here to here. And this is where we can take... No, asshole... And we'll go over here, not boolean, and then connect that in here. So, we are not died. We're not dead, or dead, or died, whatever. Um, so now, it's going to trigger through this, and then when we're no longer dead, then it'll do the animation to get back up, and then when it's done, we'll be back in our normal status again. So, that should take care of that issue. So, do 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 Ooh. Um... That looked like crap. Um, because what we did, we had that there. We need to go back into here, and we need to do our time remaining 
So we need to do that. And float less than 0.1. So now it'll finish the animation before going into that dead animation. And save. So there, he's dead. Now what we want to do, <laughs> it just looks so bad, lay there with his pretty little pink heart underwear with his pants around his ankle. Um, we want him to come back to life after a few seconds. Then we want him to respawn. So what we'll do here is at the end of our death sequence, we're going to put a delay. And we'll give it, whatever, five seconds. So after five seconds, what we want to do is, first off, we want to change the mesh. Right now, we know he's infected, and we want him to be cured. Uh, so let's grab our mesh. We want to set skeletal mesh. Connect this in here. So we want to we want to change the mesh. That is the first thing we want to do is get that mesh changed over. And we need to go find that mesh. So we know we got that guy. City characters. Yeah, gangster. I close the blue the animation blueprint. Click right there. So now he should change after five seconds to no longer be the infected. We see he's, he's infected. Does his death animation. And five seconds later... Ah, shit. Why did you do that, you dumbass? Why would you do that? You're already in, in in the animation state. Why would you go down there and stand up and then fall back down again? That makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, Unreal Engine, why you vex me so? Because we're still in the dead state, when we create or convert the skeletal mesh, um, we don't need to do once. <sighs> Why are you changing that? You should not do that. Why do you mess with me? <laughs> you're you are dead I really just don't get it. Let's continue on, and I will figure out what's going on with that. So after this, we're going to, let's say, delay for another three seconds. And we are going to Set is dead to false. And that should take us out of our dead state, and he should stand up. Although it's not the right animation for the right point of time. I guess one thing we could do is, since we're dealing with 
uh, stupidity here. Um, all right, we're just killing them all over again, but. We could put in checks later to where, you know, we can't actually cause that to happen. Uh, to where we can keep killing them. Because his health is already still at zero. We would then want to set the health back to 100. So to counteract the stupidity of Unreal Engine 4, of it just baffling the brain. Whenever it sets the skeletal mesh again, See, it's not doing it now because he's already in that skeletal mesh. So, see, right back up again. All right, so to deal with the issue of it being an absolute tard, and we go from the bang, falls over, and we want him to transform, but we don't want him to do that. Because that's just plain stupid. Why would you want that to happen? It doesn't happen now, because we're already in that skeletal mesh. Shoot him head. Headshot. See, that just baffles the dog shit out of me. I'm shooting you right in the crotch area, and you're not receiving damage. Weird. Okay. So, to, <laughs> to bypass that crap, what we can do is take this set skeletal mesh, and we can either apply this in the animation blueprint... Um, or we can do this inside the um, let's try it inside the animation blueprint I'm going to get rid of this here just to see and we'll come back to this and finish up our revival sequence here right now we're just going to go ahead and this is going to go into the death state we know that it's going to break the rest of what we just did. But it is going to allow him to die. Goes into that death state. So, let's go back to our animation blueprint. Since we're already in here in the event graph at this point, we can, and since we are in this right here, we can run off of this infected base and then go through and wait for you know Unreal Engine 4 to respond instead of just hanging up thank you kiss my ass anyway um, <laughs> let's go ahead and try putting some of that functionality back inside here so after we have died we're gonna then go to our delay and we'll do a three second delay. We'll cut that time down. Five seconds is a little bit long to wait. Now we could also do a custom event in here as well, but I'm just going to stick this on the end. So, with our delay, after three seconds, after we've died, um, we are in the death animation now at this point. And... We have to take into account that. Let's go ahead and do a print text. Just so we can see that we're, we're getting to that point. Delay of three seconds. Hello. Okay. And then from here, we're going to... We can set our skeletal mesh at this point. Um, but I don't want to. So what we were doing here before is we are in our death state. We want to go ahead and 
we run through this. We want to then let's actually come back over here, get a reference to our mesh from here. Get mesh. And set skeletal mesh. And see if we can just kind of bypass that weird anomaly where it was just doing that weird death thing. To make it easy, I'm going to go back in here. Nope. Um, city characters, gangster. I'm going to click here. Oh. Why is that there? That might have been something I didn't look at before. It's changing the pose there. So after three seconds, it changes. And then we want to go ahead and then delay another three seconds, just so we have a little bit of a transitional period here. And then we want to set is dead to false. Make it back alive again. And let's see if it'll all work through here. All right, falls over dead after three seconds. He's no longer infected, and then gets back up again. There we go. No weird transitions. Probably could have done that in the uh, the other blueprint, but that's fine. We'll, we'll we'll leave it handled in the animation blueprint. Um, at this point, everything is good to go. But what we need to do now is. Since we were already in the animation blueprint, we could have done it there, but let's um, delay just for the sake of it and make it six seconds. Then let's go ahead and set our health back up. Set our health two. And if you've got a max health value, you can plug that in there, but we're we're setting our health back to 100. And with that, we have converted from infected with an animation. It resets. There was a little bit of an anomaly there, but not horrible. We have put him back. Now one shot won't kill him again. Hey, Chad. We can shoot him. At this point, if you wanted to go from, okay, I'm not infected. This is where you build your team structure. Your teams would be infected and not infected, or cured and infected, or whatever. And if I am cured and I'm shooting somebody else who is cured, they take no damage. The the shot that I apply to them to cure them from being a zombie is um, you know, not going to affect the, the living. Uh, that way you're not it's eliminating friendly fire. So if you hear your friends over here trying to do something and all of a sudden, uh, who shot me, you son of a bitch, and you know that kind of crap. That eliminates that from happening. So we know that this is an infected base. You know, this is this person starts off infected. You can create the teams inside here. You can create teams inside of a data structure or what have you. Uh, but you can do whatever you want to on that. I will cover teams and everything else in other videos. I just want to go through and do this. Set it up to where we're cured. We want to cure one of the infected guys. falls over and 
he is cured. Now once he gets back up, he's on my team. So now he will be fighting against the infected. The infected are fighting against the cured. And if the infected goes over there, we would do the same basic system for going from one to the other. And setting up this game mode, what I would end up doing is with the infected base characters, they would just be whenever you they they spawn. You set up a like a a player spawn. You get your basic information, you get all your you know in your world settings and whatnot, but you can actually create a spawning system for them and whenever they spawn they are infected. Um, there's so many different ways you can go about setting this up. And all I wanted to do was show the the process for converting from one to the other. So when we shoot them, we have then cured them. They'll get back up. They'll be on our team. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take a look at some of the stuff like the uh, AI enemy soldiers, which is a really good AI pack for um, for the money what you get. It's nice. It's not bad. But what I want to see is, since they have spawners and so forth, waypoints, objectives, and things already set up for the AI to work with, what I want to try to do is see if I can manipulate the teams via the blueprints and say that um, once I have cured this person, they are now no longer Team 1. They're going to now hate Team 2. And see if I can manipulate that back and forth. And... I think that would be freaking awesome because that way you've got AI running back and forth. You could have 50 versus 50, but only one player. It could be a single player game or a multiplayer game. And, uh, you know, you could re rig all this stuff to work in multiplayer because right now this is not going to work in, in multiplayer. I'm also almost willing to guarantee, but we'll take a look really quickly. New pie window. All right, so this is our client, and there was much rejoicing, and our server. Let's see if we can see each other back and forth. I know that if I come over here as the client and shoot this guy all day long because I haven't replicated the shooting portion of it, nothing's going to happen. So let's move this to where we can see that. The guy on the right. Now the server comes over here shoots the guy on the right. So you see, it's not set up for replication right now. So the client's not going to see what the server's done. And the client can't do diddly squat. Except for walk around. So yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't be replicated because I, I didn't set up anything that way. But you can set it up for multiplayer replication and so forth. Uh, if you desired. I don't desire right now. But like I said, I will take a look at the system for AI enemy soldier. Uh, if you haven't checked out aspect, that asset pack, do it. Do it now. Uh, AI enemies, assault soldiers, the freaking developer is a nice guy. Um, I spoke a couple of emails back and forth. Um, he just seems like a good guy. Very responsive to questions and stuff like that. I mean, hey, can't complain about that. It's easy to work with. Um, still kind of green at working with it. It doesn't work with 420s, so I haven't really... I, I can set it up 422 with, with my multiplayer set up and tweak a few things, but I just haven't done it. Um, really good. I think it was like 50 bucks well freaking worth it if you want to check it out there is a demo you can download for it but it's in a really low video resolution um, I th think I have a version of it let's go ahead and save all make sure everything's good to go close this um, I have a project with that in there and I can't remember if I've... Oh, shit, I wanted to go into that one. Well, let's open that one up here in just a minute.
Because I've already got Cindy characters in this one. I don't think I've got it in this one. I think this is an unmodified version. And this is a modified version. But, yeah, converting to the Cindy Studios characters was really easy with that pack. Um, currently, right now, the, the player character is set up in first-person mode. I would probably change it over to a third person so that I could set up multiplayer and, and so forth where I can go in there with friends if I had any, besides my imaginary ones. Um, but yeah, even as a single player, I'll just go in on this version right here. Just a, a quick recap. Now I need to finish that um, video I was going to do on the free game ideas, uh, which I'll do that here shortly. Uh, I know that it's we're past the hour mark, and need to take a break, and then when I come back, I will do a video about the free game ideas on the other game mode that I really want to do and really want to work on. But, just to show this really quickly, I play, you have, um, you know, instructions on the walls of what to do here. See, he's taking my health down. He got shot in the back by his buddy there. Let's demo I can hit H and heal back up. And also hit F2. And switch levels. Hit F1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There was recently an update. Um, don't like that. That's um, the F keys is actually changing the um yeah I didn't think about that. The the function keys actually change your like graphics and stuff like that on there. So I'll just run past these guys. Got the H key. You can see you got three different teams. Oh shit, already good. hitting the, you know, the H key to, to give me my health back. I'm just going to keep resetting my health and just run through this map. When you play it in standalone, I think it will bypass that. I'm playing it in just the, the standard view window. Alright, so we'll go to the next level and just show this. Now it's set up to where this guy is on my team. So now we'll go over here, we start engaging in combat. He'll be on my team. Again, I'm just gonna scoot through. So yeah, you can set up teams, team one versus team two. Team 1 and 2 versus Team 3, whatever else. You can set up whatever you want for your, your team structure. Stop shooting me. Took a shortcut trying to avoid going all the way around, but I gotta go all the way around. Okay. We'll just go back and, and, and look at this. Um, and then we'll get out of here, take a break. And when I come back, you can see these are target points. These are where they will go to. They will hold um, position there. They'll move to that position and whatnot. And then you've also got the, um, the spawners. So this is Soldier 3. His enemy is going to be me, the first person character. But you can add, this has got Soldier 1, 2, and 3, so you've got three AIs to work with here. You can make your own customs. It's really easy to convert those into here, too. Um, you also got your first person character, which is, yeah, whatever. But I've already got a whole other video on how to use this. Um, but if you want to learn more about it, let me know. I will do another video on this. Um, I've already got this version right here with these city characters that I've already started putting in there. And we'll probably end up doing like a 
city map or or one of the other maps just for shits and grins. So we'll just hit play. Show you that I've got the uh, the Cindy characters in here. Since send first person shooter mode, you still got the mannequin arms and stuff. I didn't change the uh, other guy out, but no worries. But yeah, I was working on doing that. Uh, put in the Polygon War Pack, and yeah, what I'll probably end up doing is going back in here just for shits and grins, and adding in those things, adding in the the enemies. Just got to make sure you've got your uh, nav mesh balance put into the map, and then just put in your target points and your. Uh, uh, your AI spawners. Set your AI spawner to be whatever team you want them to be, whoever their enemies are going to be, that kind of stuff. Like I said, it's really easy to work with. I, I didn't ask you for a map check or a message log. Um, so it's obvious I haven't gone in here and done anything with this one yet. Santi, love you guys. Put your shit in more folders. Starting to get there, but all this stuff not in folders. No bueno. Grinds my OCD. All this stuff needs to be sorted better and, and put in folders. Love the assets. Still need to get someone to um, rip apart the tanks for me. Um, not necessarily this is a tank destroyer. So it doesn't quote unquote have a, um, a turret. It just has the gun that would go up and down. So I need to get someone to rip the gun off of this one with the mantlet. Um, stuff like the uh, little Panzer III. The turret needs to be ripped out. The gun needs to be ripped off. So need the individual, like the main body, the turret, and the gun separate. Same thing here. Need the main body, the turret, and the gun separate. Here's your T-34, and by the way, that's a Tiger, and that's a T-34. Love the T-34. I don't know why. I just do. Same thing on the M4 Sherman. Um, need the gun with mantlet ripped away from the turret, and the turret ripped away from here. Because when you're setting up the rigging for these, for Unreal Engine 4, you have to... Okay, here's the body. Here's a turret. Turret is needs to be socketed to, and they all, they're skeletal meshes already, but this skeletal mesh needs to be separate from the, the turret needs to be separate from the body, the gun needs to be separate from the turret. So when you're actually setting up your tank to actually function, they need to be socketed in so that you can actually set it up to where you can operate them. So your WASD keys will handle your forward, backwards, turn left, turn right, but moving your mouse around will actually turn the turret left and right or up and down we'll move the gun up and down so you can have control of the turret so you can aim and fire um, the guns here haven't really been fixed between any of the versions that I've, I've got from them but this piece this piece uh, a bunch of the pieces of the the 88 millimeter the Flak 18, but the base needs to be separate from the gun mechanism. If you want it to have uh, animation for recoiling, that's one thing. Not so much worried about that point, but the um, at least the portions of the gun itself, and I would imagine the the shield as well, needs to be all together at a certain point because the shield will not move up and down but I think for the sake of things it should be able to move up and down with the gun and this should be looked at like a tank because you have the base which does not move but it would act like the turret portion of a tank for the gun to be able to turn left and right and go up and down and set it up as an AI system so it could be sitting there 
idle and when you have an airplane trying to fly over it could track the airplane and shoot at the airplane so yeah if anybody wants to take the time to do it or if Cindy wants to do it uh, I don't have the patience to mess the 3D models anymore I love these tanks and they're great if you want to pose them but you really can't make them functional to where you can drive them and use the turrets just simply because of the fact that um, the skeletal mesh needs to be broken apart the main body of the tank needs to be separate from the turret and the gun needs to be separate with the mantlet and in this case like to here you've got um, a coaxial weapon here you've got the main gun and then you've got this mantlet shield here and those need to be all combined together but separate from the turret so that you can animate them up and down by controlling them as if it was you know your character looking up and down then the turret itself needs to be able to traverse left and right so that also has to be taken away from the uh, the main body of the tank so is that if you want to do this for me that would be lovely but the body needs to be separated the turret needs to be separated as a separate skeletal mesh and the gun with mantlet and coax needs to be separate on the stug you're just going to have this portion of the gun mantlet and the gun itself the ticker again no real coaxial so you'll have the gun barrel and this mantlet piece in the front and of course the turret separate from the body same thing on T-34 there's no coaxial gun so body turret barrel needs to be three different meshes me love I love Jeeps I know that's a shock but yeah and the the M4 Sherman which was out here on the beach needs to be separated same thing with these ships I can make something work with the, um, the 88s there's also the uh, the guns in here um, I could probably make these work pretty well the way they are because the gun barrel is separate from here but same thing with the ships because you've got three different marine vehicles here you got the um, destroyer and I assume this is like a battleship we're gonna say it's a battleship the um, main body of the ship needs to have the turret all three or four all three turrets need to be removed and the guns here's where it's kind of a toss-up um, you got three guns I would probably leave them unified together even though technically speaking each gun could elevate on its own separately in real life but for the sake of it for gameplay I would like to have the ship with the turret separated from the ship all three turrets removed and the gun barrels removed from the turret so that I can set them up to be functional as well not so much worried about the secondary guns and the anti-aircraft stuff that might be something for later on but that's a lot of work because you've got one two three four five six seven eight per side that's a lot of separate little things to, to worry about animating might be something for down the road but primarily for the battleship I would say the propeller you probably won't, won't ever see but for now the three main turrets separated from the the hull of the ship and the barrels separated from the turrets on the submarine you do have this one gun here so the ship you separate this portion uh, portion the um, the, t the turret base separate from the the hull of the ship the sub and then this gun barrel portion separated from there so you'd have three static me or skeletal meshes there destroyer you've got the one main turret there so same thing with a battleship you need to have the hull the turret needs to be separate and the two gun barrels need to be separate 
Oh, you do have two turrets. Okay. So, yeah, that would be the thing. Now, I have done just screwing around um, the submarine, where you could actually <laughs> pilot the submarine around. And since there's no torpedo hatches shown on the, side of the, tor on the uh, sub, but I just had it to where it, it spawned, like, right here in front. It spawned torpedoes and then set up health on the, um, the, the destroyer. And whenever the torpedoes hit, they actually did an explosion animation or explosion and particle effect and sound, and was able to sink the uh, the ship. But really want to get the ships done and the tanks done so that I can do tutorials on how to actually make them functional. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Um, Said if anybody wants to see more about the um, AI enemy soldiers, let me know. Uh, want me to continue on with any of these other projects? Let me know. Mm, don't say if I didn't do anything. All right, get out of here. Y'all, let me know what you want to see, and thanks for watching. And we will see you around.